Hello, everyone. Okay, so it seems that uh, this class have fewer people. Maybe they, maybe they, they thought the class is too easy. So let's do something hard so they will fall, fall behind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so first thing, let, let's review what we taught last class. So uh, firstly, uh, I just uh, give you some uh, intuition about linear algebra and we talked about some how, how to add up or multiply or subtract two vectors. And I also tell you something about the geometric meaning of the uh, of the matrix, or actually the geometric meaning of the matrix multiplications. Okay, and after that, we actually uh, define rigorously what is matrix. Maybe uh, a matrix is just a table of numbers. It, it is nothing special. And then I just tell you what is the size of the matrix. So remember that if you have a matrix like uh, three, two, one, one, two, two. And the size of the matrix is the number number of the rows, two and by the number of columns, two by three. So this kind of symbol is read as two by three. So you cannot read that read it as two times three. So you, you read it as two by three. So the, the first number over here means how many rows it have. And the second number over here means how many columns uh, it has. You can't switch them. So you, you can only write it in this way. So it's two by three matrix. Mm -hmm. And after that, we define what is matrix addition and uh, matrix multiplication. So both of these two operations have some restriction at first. So uh, before you're doing matrix addition, you should check that the the two matrix that you are going to sum up is in the same size. So the, in the same size means both of those numbers should be the same. So they are exactly of the same shape, then you can do addition. And the, the matrix multiplication requires that the, the size it should be m times n and n times r. So this number of the two matrix should, should match up each other. So what that means is that uh, suppose this is a matrix A and this is a matrix B. So for, for the matrix A, the, the, the number of the columns of the A of A should match up the number of rows of B. And then you can do the matrix multiplication by using uh, by, by by finding each of the product by this way. So I will just uh, do more examples so you can uh, you can be more familiar with the matrix multiplication. And then, uh, just like numbers, the matrix addition and the multiplication also satisfies the distributive law and the associativity. So basically, uh, which means A times B plus C is uh, when this uh, when this expression makes sense, it is equal to A B plus A C, and A times B C is actually equal to a, b, and c. So this is the distributive law and associativity. OK, so actually, to be more familiar with this kind of stuff, uh, let's do an example. So and this example will help you to solve the problem three in the homeworks. OK, by the way, the homework is already uploaded online. So uh, to, to, to download the homework, just, uh, just view my website, which is qirui.li. So it's my name. And then you just enter homework and press enter. So you will see the instructions and the link to the homework. So uh, download it, and it is a PDF file. So it is the PDF file is, is a file, right? And all the problem is just over here, over here, over here. And there are some spaces <coughs> over here. So you just have to print it out and do the other problems, problems directly over here. And then write your uni and your name uh, over here. So there, there will be some space for you to write your union name. So um, I'm doing that because I want to make it easier for, for TA to grade the homeworks. Because uh, in this way, er everybody will have the same format of, of the homework. OK, so this is a uh, fun thing about the homework. OK, uh, can, uh, let's go back. I will give you some example of the distributive law. So question? Uh, Thursday. Thursday. 
Thursday. Oh, wait, wait, what, what is the date today? Wednesday. Oh, today is Wednesday, right? <laughs> Tomorrow. Uh, OK, uh, uh, let's just do next Monday. Because I, I, I hope you guys should have, the, uh, have enough time to do homework. OK, so let's change it to next Monday. I, I will also change that on the website. So OK, so let, uh, let's see some, uh, something about the distributed clouds. So suppose you have a matrix A, but I, I didn't tell you anything about that. And uh, suppose that I have A times maybe 1, 1, 2, 1 is equal to uh, 1, 0. And I tell you that A times uh, 0, 1, 3, 1 is equal to 0, 1. OK, so the first question is, what is the size of A? Anyone can make a guess? Two by four. Yeah, two by four. Why is that? Yeah, because um, by the <coughs> matrix multiplication, uh, this expression makes sense if and only if the number of the the number of the Columns of A should match up the number of the the number of the rows uh, uh, of this vector uh, of this column matrix, right? So that means uh, th these two numbers should be the same, and and because we have four rows over here, so that means A should have four columns. So there are four columns, and then uh, how do you know how many rows does A have? Because you just look at the result. Because the result should have the same number of rows as A and the same number of columns as the right matrix over here. So it should have one column just as, uh, just as it did over here and, and, uh, and two rows. Because it has two rows, so A have two rows. So actually this means that A have two rows. So this means A is a two by four matrix. So uh, yeah. You, you can only, yeah, uh, you, uh, you can know the size of A by this expression. Okay, the second question is that, um, can you predict the result of A times maybe, let's say, three, three, six, three. So, can you make a guess of what is the result of this kind of multiplication, if you know this <coughs> stuff? Yes, yeah, right there. Why is that? Because actually, as you can see, three three six three is actually uh, equal to uh, this vector, uh, this column matrix times three, right? So I'll say three three six three is equal to <coughs> one one two one times three. So please note that I write this number in the right of the columns. <coughs> Why is that? Because I, I consider every number as one by one matrix. So this kind of writing makes sense because uh, uh, this, this column matrix only have one column. So, uh, so, so I should write this one by one matrix on the right. Yeah, this is just an easier notation to match up the requirement of the matrix multiplication. Um, because 3363 three, three is equal to 1121 one, one times 3. So you can actually write this, uh, write this expression as A times 3363 three, three equal to A times 1121 one, one times 3, right? Where you, you consider this 3 as 1 by 1 matrix right over here. And by the condition is that you are uh, you already know this part, right? This is by the uh, associativity, because this part equal to this, and then you calculate it using the first two parts. And then it tells you that this, this one equal to one zero, and then you just move your three right over here. And then one zero times three is just multiply everything by three, so it's three zero. 
just like this. So this uses uh, uh, this uses the uh, associativity. So you break up this vector to the, to the, uh, this kind of form, and then you combine these two, and then you, you recombine them together. You got three zero. Okay. The next question is, how can you uh, can you predict the the result of a times let's see one two five two. What is the num what is the numbers over here? <coughs> one, one. one one. Right. Why is that? It's both of those combined. Yeah, because actually one, two, five, two, you can actually decompose it as the sum of these two letters, right? Yeah, it, it's very hard to observe, but the, in the homework the problem is easier. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, so a times one, two, five, two. So we can see that you can break it up as a times bracket or uh, as one one two one plus zero one three one. And then what happens is that you have distributive law, so you can actually uh, distribute each of those column matrix to to a and then you get a times, okay, I'll move it out so everybody can see. It. A times one one two one plus <coughs> A times zero one three one, and then you use the condition right over, over there. So you got <laughs> one zero plus zero one, so you got one one. Yeah, so. There are just some tricks that are demonstrating uh, uh, that using the property of the matrix <coughs> multiplication, and then you uh, uh, you can predict almost uh, almost everything by using these two conditions. Any question? Okay, so far so good. Um, and also one more important thing is that the matrix multiplication, although. It, Although it's pretty like numbers, but the matrix multiplication is not commutative. So that means a, B, a times B is not necessarily equal to B times A. So uh, this is the most special thing in the matrix. So let's just um, do an example. And this example is in the, uh, is in the page 22 of the notes. I, you, you don't have to find the notes because I will write, um, write it on the blackboard. <coughs> so, okay, let's say, suppose A, B, R, two by two matrices. Okay, uh, so, and then the question is that, uh, does, uh, when, when does A plus B times A minus B equal to A square minus B square? So actually, uh, in common sense, uh, if you have, if you, uh, if you if you treat numbers, then this formula is always true. Like uh, x x plus y times x minus y is always like is always equal to x square minus y square. But in matrix in, in matrices, you should be very careful about that because the uh, multiplication of the matrix uh, is not necessary to commute. So, but how do we uh, how do we study this kind of ex expression? Although we don't have commutativity, but we still have the uh, we still have the distributive law and associativity, so actually we can expand we can expand this expression like a plus b times a minus b. You can expand it. You can expand the second bracket uh, second bracket first. So you uh, you expand the second per, uh, parenthesis. So it's a plus b times a minus a plus b times b. 
and then if you expand uh, each parenthesis, is equal to a squared plus b a minus a b, and then minus b squared. As you see, what happens? The thing happens is is right over here. If a and b are numbers, then these two terms will cancel each other. But if a b are matrices, these two terms uh, is not necessary to cancel each other. So you can just uh, give two random matrix and see a b is not equal to b a. There are a bunch of examples. Right, uh, uh, there are a bunch of examples. So in this way, uh, when does uh, this expression equal to a squared minus b squared? This two, as you can see, this expression is equal to this expression all the time. So the question is, when does these two things are equal? So it's the same thing as asking, when does this expression equal to that expression? So this expression equal to that expression, if and only if the middle stuff equal to zero, right? OK, I'll give you some time to uh, really understand this part. This two equal if and only if this part equal to zero. So actually, uh, the conclusion is that a plus b times a minus b equal to a square minus b square if and only if uh, a b equal to a. So uh, only if when the matrix A and B satisfy this condition, uh, they can use the formula. Otherwise, uh, it, it cannot use the formula. Formula. So, I'll give you an example of the case where A B equal to B A. So, like, if A is equal to maybe minus one one, and B is equal to two two two. So, and then this two matrix satisfies that A B equal to B A. But if I give you some random matrix like A is equal to one, 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 and B is equal to maybe uh, two, three, then this does not satisfy that A, B equal to B, A. And actually, uh, this kind of case is happens almost every time. And, uh, and this, uh, this, this kind of case only happens uh, in very, very special case. So uh, yeah, so when you say A, B is equal to B, A, it's <coughs> actually a very strong condition. So. Uh, uh, that's the uh, that's the example right over here. So I just want to emphasize that two matrix is not necessary to commute each other. Any question? Question? Under what condition does A B equal to B A? Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, there are there are a lot of necessary conditions, but uh, the sufficient condition is uh, is very hard to describe. So actually, uh, 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 if you if you learn polynomials of the matrix, and then you can construct a lot of matrix that can commute with your original matrix. So what I mean is that if you have a matrix A, and then uh, at least we know that all the polynomials of A is uh, uh, is commute with A. So what I mean is that if, if this is your A, and if I let B is equal to like A squared plus uh, identity, or like B is equal to A cubed plus 2A squared plus A, and all, the, all those kind of stuff uh, commute with A. And actually, uh, for a uh, uh, for, for, the, uh, for the general matrix A, uh, you can uh, the only thing that you can expect is the uh, is about the polynomials of A that can commute with A, uh, but uh, and also in some special case of uh, in, on, a, on some special case of A, you can also uh, expect some other matrix that commute with A, and, and I think that, uh, this part is a little bit exceeded the, what we are going to learn. So um, actually, uh, in the future. Uh, you will do some exercise to see that actually the matrix commute with A is a very, very small part of all the matri matrices. Any other question? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Let's continue the review part. Okay, and, uh, in the end of the last course, we also introduced some special matrices, like uh, diagonal matrices. And then remember, in the matri in the matrices, the diagonal is always always means this part, and that that part is not diagonal. So diagonal matrices just means out of the diagonal, all the entries should be zero. And there are uh, and the second uh, uh, the second thing is a scalar matrices. The scalar matrices is a, is a diagonal matrix that has a, uh, that all the entries on the diagonal are, are the same. So like this one is called a scalar matrix. And the geometric meaning of a scalar matrix is is magnify everything by the scalars. Like this matrix just means in the three dimensional space you magnify everything by five times. And then the last uh, the last one is a unit matrix. So the unit matrix is a uh, is a scalar matrix with a scalar to be one at all at all the entries in the diagonal. So this is this one is called called the unit matrix. So you have one <coughs> on the diagonal. And the geometric meaning of the unit matrix is actually do nothing. And then last time you also int uh, introduced that if we if, if you left modifying or right modifying <coughs> a diagonal matrix. What will happen? And uh, last time I said that if you like to multiply the diagonal matrix, then that will actually multiply each row of your matrix by by, uh, by the corresponding numbers. And uh, if you like to multiply a diagonal matrix, then it will do something on each columns of your matrices. So those are the some special matrices. Any question? Okay. So okay. So we have reviewed all the concepts and give you some examples. Then you will be good uh, in your homework. So now uh, this time uh, let's study the inverse matrix and the transpose of the matrix. And after that, uh, we will uh, we are going to learn some the we are going to learn the uh, the uh, the block uh, the blockwise calculation. And then if we have time, we can uh, we can go to the elementary matrices. So okay, uh, can I erase all the things? Okay. Uh, 
follow this matrix T as the inverse of A. So this is a analog of the reciprocal in the in the world of matrix. So and then we all we always denote this B as and then in this case we denote uh, B as in the B as A inverse. So just put this minus one over here to uh, to denote uh, this is a inverse matrix. Okay, let me give you some example of the inverse matrix. Okay, uh, can you guys give me a random to bunch matrix? Just give me four numbers.
and 81 minus 2 is 79. So this part is 79 over 79, so it is 1. So as you can see, when I, uh, when I multiply this matrix by this on the right, it, it gives you the unit matrix. And then this matrix is just called the inverse. <coughs> the inverse of uh, this 1, 9, 9, 2. And then you, you can just denote this matrix as 1, 9, 9, 2 inverse. So 1, 9, 9, 2 inverse means this matrix. Question? In the definition, you define that A has to be an n by n matrix. So does that mean that any matrix where the rows and columns are not equal do not have n versus yeah, 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 you are right. Um, in your definition, I only see n by n matrix. So if you have a matrix that is not, uh, it, it, uh, it, uh, it's not a square, we can't say the inverse of that matrix. So we can only say, we can only talk about the inverse of the matrix if this matrix is a square matrix. So this is a very good point. I have another question. Question? Um, so because of the equality of the A equals the identity, mm -hmm. does that mean that the inverse of the identity matrix is the identity matrix? Yeah, itself? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. When I say identity matrix, it means the unit matrix, it means the diagonal matrix that is all the one on the diagonal. Yeah, only one. There's only one unit matrix for each uh, for each edge. Any other question? Okay, um, so far so good. So at this time I just as you can see I multiply this matrix on the right of that. But you can also try to multiply this matrix on the left of that. And, and you will say that it will give you the same result. So although the matrix multiplication is not necessary to commute, but this case is uh, is, of, uh, is a first case that uh, the the, uh, the inverse of the matrix is always commute with the matrix itself. So let's just write it as a proposition. And you might, uh, if you want to prove, you can just look at my lecture notes. matrix, uh, you will learn that maybe uh, tomorrow or next week because uh, it's not included in, uh, in this class. But now let's talk to you some, um, for, for some special matrix, how to find the inverse. It's actually like this way. Uh, remember that we have learned some special matrix, which is um, the diagonal matrix in general, right? So what is the inverse for the diagonal matrix? So suppose that like, you have a diagonal matrix, right? If I write 2, 3, 1, 2, okay, 
Uh, can you guess what is the inverse of that? So actually, you want to find some matrix such that you multiply them together, it gives you something like 1, 1, 1, 1. So can you guess what is the entry of this matrix? <laughs> So remember last time we, 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 we talked about the phenomenon of left multiplying uh, uh, Can you guess it? Yeah, uh, one half, one third, one, yeah, one yeah. half It's one half, one third, one and one half Yeah, because remember last time we, we talked about when we multiply the matrix, uh, diagonal matrix on the left What will happen is that it will actually multiply each row of the right matrix and then because you want the final result to be 1, 1, 1, 1, right? So uh, actually uh, this row is required to be the row that when you multiply 2 on it, it will give you this row. So that's why this is 1 half over here. And the same thing as this over here, over here, over here. So, so you see that uh, for the diagonal matrix, everything is very simple. Uh, when, you, uh, when you are going to find the uh, when, when you are going to find the inverse of the diagonal matrix, you only have to find the reciprocal of each numbers on the diagonal respectively. Okay, so this is the inverse of the diagonal matrix. Another qu question is that when is a uh, diagonal matrix invertible? Uh, the answer is Zeros on the yeah, when, when, there, when there's no zeros on the diagonal. So a diagonal matrix is invertible if and only if all the entries on, on the diagonal is, is not zero. So because for the zero, uh, you can't find the reciprocals of zero. So the, uh, the, matrix, the diagonal matrix is invertible if and only if all the entries on the diagonal is not zero. Any question? Okay, um, yeah, so far so good. Okay, so the inverse of the matrix is a very important part of the, uh, of the matrices. So let's now study another kind of operation. It's called the transpose of the matrix. Yes. Mm. If you have um, okay, oh, let's say one more sentence, and uh, we denote, we always denote the transpose of A as A transpose. That's not here right over here. Okay, so let's see some examples of the transpose. So if A is equal to maybe 1, 2, 3, uh, 6, 7, 9, and the transpose of A 
is just like the BBA over this diagonal. So the A transpose is equal to uh, 1, 2, 3, and 6, 7, 9. So uh, by the transpose, it simply means you, you, you write each row in the columns uh, in, in the order. So this, uh, this A, this is uh, A transpose. Okay, another example, if, if B is equal to uh, some matrix like 1, 9, 9, 2, then B transpose is equal to, uh, you will write each row in columns, 1, 9, uh, and 9, 2. <coughs> okay, let's do more examples. Uh, if C is equal to, one, three, one, two, one, one. Then C transpose is equal to uh, one, two, three, one, one, one. So <coughs> this, uh, this kind of stuff is called transpose. And then uh, we, uh, we did not transpose as, as the matrix itself with a small letter T on the uh, right top of, of, uh, of the matrix. Okay, so what properties does transpose have? Mm -hmm. Let's see. So the transpose have some basic properties. is defined to be uh, defined by the rows uh, multiplied in the row of A's and the column, column of B's. And uh, if you do transpose, then the rows of A would be the columns of A transpose, and the, row, and the column of B would be the rows of B transpose. So it, it, is all, uh, it is all because that we define the matrix multiplication in that way. So the A B transpose is equal to B transpose A transpose. And then this is uh, addition and subtraction. This is multiplication. And then how about the division? So the division is uh, is something about the inverse, right? So A inverse transpose is equal to A transpose inverse. So that means taking inverse and taking transpose uh, uh, is uh, does not influence each other. So just, uh, just like the example we did last time, uh, oh, this is a symmetric matrix. Let's just write another matrix. Like, uh, suppose this A is equal to 1, 2, uh, like uh, 1, 2, uh, uh, 4, 9. And then in this case, A inverse is equal to the, uh, A inverse is equal to the, Mm, let's see. Okay, it's, uh, it's 9 minus 2 minus 4, 1. Okay, <coughs> and then if you, if you know that, and if, you, if I tell you another matrix, 
which is got by the transpose from uh, from this original matrix. Let's see, it's one, <coughs> one, two, four, nine. So what is the uh, what is the inverse of this matrix right over here? You uh, you just transpose this matrix, and after you transpose this matrix, it will become the inverse of that matrix. So the inverse of this matrix is simply by transpose this a, a inverse. So it's nine minus four minus two one. So this is uh, a transpose is equal to that, and this is a transpose inverse. This is also equal to A inverse transpose. So this is an example of the inverse and transpose. The taking inverse and taking transpose can confuse each other. Mm -hmm. So this is the basic properties of the transpose of the matrix. Uh, okay, uh, this condition only makes sense when A is a square matrix. Okay. Mm. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Um, in the next section, I will introduce another special matrix, which is called the upper triangular matrix. So, what is upper triangular matrix? the definition and what, what does upper triangular matrix look like? So because we require that every entry below diagonal should be zero. So the upper triangular matrix looks like this. Looks like maybe one, two, three, and then there can be some numbers right over here. Nine, one, two. So this one is the uh, upper triangular matrix. So please remember that last time I, I warned you that the diagonal only refers to this line. It, uh, it's not the other line. So when I say diagonal, it only, uh, it only means this line. So this is the uh, upper triangular <coughs> matrix. And is this a matrix upper triangular? Like uh, if I say, is this an upper triangular matrix? No. It's not, it's not, right? It, because because this is a diagonal, and there are some elements right over here, which is uh, which is below the diagonal and not zero. So, so this is not an upper triangular matrix. So you should always remember the upper tri triangular matrix can only looks like this. To remember this line is very important. Okay, um, this is not an upper triangular matrix. And um, there are also some properties of easy properties of the upper triangular matrix. The relation, the product <coughs> of two, uh, of two, the product of upper triangular matrices. So, let me know. It's upper triangular. So 
So it's it just some proposition about upper triangular matrix. Uh, so if you if you uh, multiply two upper triangular matrix, then the result can only be upper triangular matrix. You can prove that re result by yourself using the matrix multiplication, and uh, uh, you will see that stuff. Okay, the question is, um, let me ask you guys a question. So <coughs> does diagonal matrix upper triangular? No? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. yes right? Because a diagonal matrix means uh, besides the uh, besides everything except the diagonal to be zero. And so the, how about the four? Huh? How about the zero if you flip the diagonal? Diagonal. If you flip all the zeros. If you flip all the zeros. Uh, what do you mean? I flip all the zeros. Uh -huh. Just give me a matrix that is diagonal. is like the lower triangular matrix, but, yeah. but it's not diagonal. So okay. yeah, my question is that does every diagonal matrix have a triangular? Yeah, so, okay. so every diagonal matrix is upper triangular. So actually, upper triangular matrix contains more matrix than the diagonal matrices. Okay, so um, this is uh, upper triangular matrix. So as you can see, we have upper triangular matrix. We should also have something like the lower triangular matrix. So, what's the definition of the lower triangular matrix? It's it's all the same, but you replace the upper by lower, right? Already, I get definition. If A is uh, n n by n matrix, um, such that. All the entries uh, below over over the diagonal uh, is R zero. Then we call it a the lower. is like anything like this. One, two, three, one, 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 or one, two, one, one, zero, zero. And the uh, easy probability is that the product of lower triangular matrices Actually, in the lecture notes, you can see more properties of, about the upper triangular matrices and the lower triangular matrices. Uh, not only the product, but also if you take, uh, if, if you have an upper triangular matrices, uh, if you have an upper triangular matrix, and then if it is if it is invertible, then if you take the inverse, the inverse of the upper triangular matrix is also an upper triangular matrix. So uh, so is so is the lower triangular matrix. And as you, as you can see, previously we defined what is the transpose. So the relation between upper triangular matrix and the lower triangular matrix is just, uh, they are just different by a transpose. So what I mean is that if you have an upper triangular matrix and you transpose it, you, 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 will, you will get a lower triangular matrix. And, uh, and, and vice versa, if you have lower triangular, 
lower triangular matrix, and then you transpose it, you will get an upper triangular matrix. And these two kinds of matrix is very important when we study the eigenvalue and eigenvectors, because uh, such uh, because this matrix is easy enough so that the equivalence is exactly on the diagonal. So this is the matrix that we finally want to get by some transformations. Any question? section. So in the lecture notes it's 1.4, so which is the block matrix multiplication. Remember, after now, everything we learn is the matrix multiplication. So the only new stuff is matrix multiplication, and every properties and every definition and every propositions is all about the properties of when you multiply two matrices together. So and we, we learn some special matrix, and we learn uh, if we multiply these two special matrix, what will happen. And then uh, this section will tell you that actually uh, the matrix multiplication can also uh, think as a another way, or there's another method to compute the matrix, matrix multiplication. But actually, this method is just a kind of viewpoint of the multiplication. It's not going to simplify your work uh, <laughs> of multiplication. So uh, this section can be concluded as one sentence, is that the multiplication can be calculated Clockwise. And then I will offer, uh, and then in this section, I will say what is the word clockwise mean. So, okay, before define what is block, let's just uh, see some example of the block clockwise matrix multiplication. So, Let's do some examples on repeat. Let's just uh, write some random three matrix and then like um, anyone want to give us this three by matrix? Give some random number. Nine, four, four, three, three, uh, five, five, six, six, eight, eight, seven, seven, two, zero. Okay. So this is a three by three matrix, and then I want to multiply it with uh, maybe a single matrix, like a three by two matrix. So this is three by three. And then uh, this part is 3 by 2. So I want to give me six numbers. Right. 10. <laughs> 10, okay. 10. <laughs> 10. <laughs> 10. <laughs> 10. <laughs> 6. 5, 5. Okay. Alright. Yeah. And then let's calculate this, this matrix multiplication by the euro way and see what is the numbers that are there. Okay, because we, I want to save time, so I will separate it very quickly. So it's um, 157, and this is 
Okay, so this one is 90, right? This one is 90. And this one is 70 plus 12, so it's 82. As you can see, this result is can match, not, not part. So uh, this method is, is called, it, it's what I call, multiplication can be calculated clockwise. And this is a block matrix multiplication. Any question about this part? Uh, um, why do we need to know this? Why do I need to know this? Because uh, after this, I will treat something, uh, I, I, I will tell you the, the column, uh, I will tell you the column of the result. It actually comes from the linear combination of the columns of the, uh, uh, of the right matrix in the product. Yeah, there's going to be something in the future that we actually need this viewpoint of the block matrix. And this also tells you the point that uh, the matrix multiplication is actually a general rule of everything. And, uh, and, uh, and the things in the matrix is not necessary to be numbers. Whenever you have things that can multiply each other and sum each other, you can uh, you can put it on the matrix and then uh, calculate the matrix matrix multiplication. Good. Okay. Any other question? Okay. Yeah. So far so good. Okay. So, uh, just as what we mentioned before, before we calculate. Uh, before the calculation of the product of two matrix, we should make sure that the, the, the number of the columns, the matchup, the number of the rows of the matrix. So actually, um, in, the, uh, in the block matrix multiplication, you should also require that the, uh, you should also require that each of the expression is makes sense. So what you need is that the partition of the columns right over here, to match up the partition of the rows that were here. So this is a necessary condition for you to calculate the, uh, the multiplication of the block matrix. So yeah, we can, uh, we can just say it as a principles. Okay, <coughs> let's, let's erase each one. Let's conclude it as a, as a proposition. So uh, the, the product of uh, matrices A, A times B can be calculated. of rows of B. So actually, basically, what is a partition? A partition just means uh, you, you have some objects right over here, right? And then you just put some, uh, put some, uh, some words over here. And then this partition is the same as thinking you decompose 6 as 2 plus 3 plus 1. And then the two partitions are the same, means that you, uh, this partition is exactly the, the same way as, like if you have, uh, if these are oranges and these are uh, uh, some other kind of words, and then, the, and then the partition are the same, just means you, you put the, you, you, you put the word in the same position, right? So, um, the partition of the columns of A to match up the partitions of the rows of B means 
Okay, if you if, if these are columns of A, and if these are rows of B, right? And the partitions are the same means that uh, the, uh, the first wall is put in the uh, after the first two oranges over here, and then the part. Uh, so in order to match up the the first wall, the, the first wall of should put uh, should put over here right after the first two rows of B, and then like this one. So this is uh, so this explains what I mean by. Uh, the partitions are the same. So just ju just like this example, like uh, this dash line is like decomposed three as two plus one, and this dash line decomposed three as two plus one. So this means uh, this means the partitions are the same. And then in the uh, in the lecture notes, there are more details about the rigorous definitions of partitions and uh, uh, some examples of the. Block, uh, blockwise matrix blockwise modification. So, any other question? <coughs> okay, yeah, this is uh, just a phenomenon of the blockwise matrix modification. Um, let's check the time. Okay, uh, yeah. So, so the class ends at 7.55, right? 50. 50, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So now we know the multiplication. And there's also uh, something else about uh, transpose, right? So how to transpose? Uh, how to transpose a block matrix? Like, in, um, now let's copy that matrix over here. It's 9, 4, 3, uh, 5, 6, 8. And then finally it's 7, 2, 0, right? So then uh, I want to transpose it. So the transpose of that is equal to like um, 9, 5, 7, 4, 6, 2, and 3, 8, 0. So this is a uh, transpose. And if I, if I write dash line over here and uh, uh, treat it as a block matrix, let's see what the phenomenon is like. So the transpose of the block matrix, because you just uh, write each row in the columns and write each column in the rows. So the first common sense is that the partition of the rows should now become the partition of the columns, and the partition of the columns should now become the partition of the rows of the transpose. So the transpose of, of the block matrix is also a block matrix that has this kind of partition. OK, this is a special case because uh, it, it, in this special case, the partition of the rows and partition of columns are the same, but it's not the case in general. And uh, I just want to warn you that the partitions of the rows over here is the partitions of the columns over here, and the partition of, partitions of the columns over here is the partition of, partitions of the rows over here. Okay, so actually, um, to transpose a block matrix, uh, it is not only transpose each positions of those sub matrices. But, but also you have to transpose uh, each one of them. What I mean is that uh, to transpose a block matrix, firstly, you, uh, you put each element in the corresponding positions like this way. You firstly put every element like this. 9, 4, 5, 6, and uh, this is 7, 2, and this is 3, 8, this is 0. So because transpose just means write each rows in columns and write, uh, write each column in rows. It's just like flipping over this way, right? And uh, if you only do this work, it is not enough. After do this work, you should also transpose each of the uh, each each of the sub matrix of the matrix, and then you will, you, you should transpose like that. Nine, five, four, six and 7, 
So you should do two steps instead of instead of just one step. So if you write this in the uh, in the algebraic word is that this is, this means uh, I write a one one uh, a one one a one two to a one n and this is a two one a two two to a two n and a m one a m two to a m n as block matrix where each of these capital A just refers to a, a sub matrix and then the transpose of that the transpose of that is actually equal to a11, a1, a12, a1n you just write uh, each of the rows in column but after you are writing this you should, uh, you should remember to put a transpose on each, on, on, on each on each one of them, AM1, AM2, and AMN, and put transpose in each of them. So uh, this is uh, important if you, uh, in the future, because uh, sometimes you, you, you might miss the transpose on each of the elements. And in the number, uh, in, in the number matrix, we only have to uh, put the numbers in the right position. We don't have to transpose each number. It is because the transpose of the number is the number itself. But if the element in the matrix is not numbers, you, you should remember to transpose each one element after, uh, after you transpose the positions. That's my point. Um, any question? Okay, uh, so why do I want to introduce the block matrix, uh, block matrix multiplication? Because uh, this is very useful if you want to uh, if you want to treat something uh, uh, as a as a whole stuff, uh, and you don't want to treat locally. You can use uh, you can use this stuff, and I will give you something in the homework, like uh, in the homework two or homework three, for you to better understand this. And another point of this block matrix multiplication is that you can see the matrix multiplication is actually like some action <coughs> that act on the rows of the of the first one in the product and act on the uh, act on the columns of the first one in the product and act on the rows of the second one in the product so to make my sense clearly i will write uh, propositions like this um, or I can just use these examples. So if I if I make partitions like this, if I make partitions like this, oh, let me see. You will see that this, uh, this column matrix is obtained by multiplying this times this, uh, this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this. And then I will write everything out. So 157, 182, and 90 is equal to, is equal to what? Is equal to 9, 5, 7? Multiply by 10 plus 4, 6, 2, multiply by 10 plus 3, 8, 0, multiply by 9. Right? So this basically tells you that 
the columns of this, the first columns of the, this matrix is obtained by making a linear combination of each columns of the Latin matrix, where the uh, number of the combination is over here, 10, 10, 9. So uh, this is a first example of the, the linear combination. So the word linear combination basically combination means that you multiply each stuff by some scalar. So which is means you're just scaling it without changing the direction and then sum it up. So this is uh, this is basically how the linear combination of this. And uh, this one is like this expression. Okay, and then you also can write where the second column comes from. The, sec the second column is 141, 158, and 82. And, and this column is obtained by calculating this way, right? This, this, and this. So it's equal to uh, 9 by 7 times 10 plus 9 by 7 times, uh, uh, no, plus 4, 6, 2 times 6 plus uh, 3 is 0 times 9. So as you can see, each column of the result is a linear combination of the columns of the first matrix in the product, and the, and, and, the, uh, and the coefficient of the linear combination just comes from the second matrix. Okay, so we talked about the columns, so how about rows? Um, can anyone guess um, where, where, where are the rows come from? Oh, I already tells you that the column, columns comes from the linear combination of the columns of the first matrix. So how about the rows of the matrix? Anyone want to look at this? So actually, each rows of the result comes from the linear combination of the rows of the second matrix. Okay, in order to view this phenomenon, you just have to uh, make a partition uh, in here another way. You make the partition uh, like this. So I'll uh, copy this matrix over here. 9, 5, 7, 4, 6, 2. And 3, 8, 0. Times 10, 10, 10, 6, 9, 9. And then you just do partitions like this way. And this way. And uh, this way. And then the result is right over here. It's 157, 141, 182, 158. 82. Right? So the partition is like this. So then you need block matrix multiplication. What uh, what does uh, this part come from? So uh, 157, 141, it comes from this way, right? This I would to, to, to like the multiply uh, things like this way. It's equal to 9 times 10, 10 plus 4 times 10, 6 and then plus 3 times 9, 9. So actually, this law comes from the linear combination of the rows of the second matrix, where our each coefficient is right over here. Right? You can answer right everything out. 182, 158 is equal to um, 5 times 10, 10 plus 6 times 
times 6 and then plus 8 times 99. You can write 90, 82 as 7 times 10, 10 plus 2 times 10, 6 plus 0 times 99. Okay, so this tells you that actually uh, you can view the products of two matrix in this way. And this also tells you the phenomenon <coughs> is if you look at the second matrix, the, the left multiplying a matrix before it, on the left of it, just like some actions on the rows of that. And if you look at the left matrix, so this means to right multiply a matrix is it, it, just like some actions that uh, linear combinations uh, on the columns of this matrix. So it is a sentence that, that uh, left multiply is action on rows and the right multiply is action on columns. Uh, this, uh, this, is, this is a phenomenon that we want to study in the next section. Any questions about this part? Okay, I will just give you some seconds for you to uh, give some time to understand what happens over here. Okay, because of this kind of phenomenon, so we want to study, uh, we want to decompose this, uh, uh, this kind of linear combination in a much, much easier way. So we want to decompose every action into the elementary way. So as you can see that uh, this part comes from the linear combination of those columns, uh, with those coefficients. So actually we want to study some basic transformations of the matrix on rows and on columns. Question? For the, that matrix up there, the way you multiplied it out was column by row, not row by column. Row by columns, right? You, you do this way, like, like this. Right? Yeah. yeah that is you, you are moving right, right? Yeah, but that is what you wrote in the yeah, you, you actually you view it as as a one element, and it, yeah. this is a row matrix. Like you, you can write it as C one, C two, C three. Oh, so you multiply it as row. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right, which is why you. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any other question about this? Yeah. So, although we have maybe ten minutes left, right? or maybe seven minutes left. Right? Okay, let's just uh, start the next thing about so it is in the notes it is one point five. So it cuts the elementary matrices and row and column transformations. Why do we care about row and columns because of this phenomenon? So let's just start. Uh, before start, before the before start of this section, I will write the sentence on the blackboard for you to remember all the time. So uh, let multiply is action on rows and let multiply. Uh, on the uh, column matrix and the row matrix. As you can see, 
in the color matrix, I always write the scalar on the right of that. And in the row matrix, I always write the scalar in the left of that. Uh, it is because in, in a natural way is that in a natural way, the scalar comes automatically on the right of the color matrix. As you can see, if I expand this, this is always on the right, and this is on the left. This is that is always on the left. Another way to think about it is that the number could be viewed as one by one matrix. And only multiplying the number on the right of color, color matrix could make sense. If you put that on the, uh, on the left of the matrix, uh, it does not make sense as matrix multiplication. So like, yeah, so, 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 so that's why uh, I always put the numbers uh, on the right of the color matrix and put the numbers in the left of the row matrix. So this is some details. Okay, and uh, also remember the left multiplying means some action on rows, and right multiplying means some action on columns. Okay, so let's define. We still have four minutes. <laughs> let's define. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> maybe some action. <laughs> okay. There are three actions on nodes. So namely, the first action is called the switching of two nodes. Switching of two nodes. So basically, if you have matrix like one, two, three, one, 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 two, one, two, and switching of two nodes. Okay, so as a notation, I always denote each row as R1 r sub 2, r sub 3, as rows. And switch two rows. If I switch the first row and the third row, so we always use this notation uh, in lecture notes. r1 and uh, this double arrow, r3, means switch is two row, and the result is just like you switch is two row. So it becomes 2, 1, 2 in the first row, and 1, 1, 1, it, it does not change, and 1, 2, 3 in the third row. So this kind of row transformation is called the row switching, or switching to rows, and, you, and then you use this sub-index to denote which row are you switching. You can write R1 to R3, and you can also write R3 to R1, it, it doesn't matter, because switching is just something of the two rows, right? Okay, in the next two minutes, I will tell you that another, the second transformation is called the multiply, row, mu row multiply. Row multiply. Okay, so basically, we do have the matrix 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2. And then the second kind of action is just multiply some row by some by, by some scalar. So I can say I multiply the second row by three, and I always write three times the second row. Remember to put three in the left of this R two because I said over there. And then the result is just one two three 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 and two one two. And this kind of this kind of stuff is called row multiplying. And then there are also the third kind of transformation is called the row adding. And we will introduce next time because we run out of time. So, okay, the, the first homework I've already uploaded on, uh, online. And then the view of the first homework is next Monday. So, uh, that's it. Thank you.